Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ron, and today we are going to be doing some builds for the coil gun. This is not going to be including the overclocks, this is just going to be for the base gun, and I'll be going over probably two builds that I use with the coil gun. So the first build I'm going to be recommending is just a general purpose build that I've been using for pretty much every scenario. It works best with um, an AoE focused primary weapon, so usually I'll take this one with the auto cannon or with the hurricane. Sometimes I'll take it with the minigun. The minigun can work well against hordes and against single targets, so it's not bad with any of the primary weapons, but it doesn't really help if I take something like Big Bertha with this, or if I take Leadstorm with this, or Jet Fuel Homebrew, something that's more single target specialized, because the coil gun, even though it does do actually decent damage to hordes um, because of its... Uh, trail that it has it's still not as great against hordes first up in tier one we have extra coil this gives us 40 more damage very nice we have larger battery this gives us more ammo this is 280 ammo and i know the ammo is really strange with this weapon because of the charge rate and simply because this exists the <laughs> controlled magnetic flow this one makes it so that's why there's such a charged rate and why it's not just a flat number, you know, showing you how many shots you have because this does take into account the percentage of ammo that you're using to either give you the regular damage or increments of less damage. And then our other option is charge speed. Charge speed, I really haven't found an issue with this weapon. It charges up pretty fast. So I usually don't take this. The extra 140% charge speed is kind of funny because you do get it up almost immediately. And I did find it... Pretty useful if you do like that quick swapping feature, especially if you're taking like uh, Born Ready with this, which you probably will be if you're running the Hurricane or the Auto Cannon, to just pull this gun up and then fire it really quick. That is actually kind of nice if you need to hit like a leech or if there's a grabber coming nearby or if you just need to damage a horde really fast. But usually I'll go with the extra ammo just so I get more shots with it. I really like the extra ammo. You don't necessarily need more damage for a lot of enemies, especially if you're hitting them in the weak spot. In tier two, we have Overcharger. This one is kind of an odd one. You can see with all the math that it has here. Uh, Lazy Maybe did a great video on how Overcharger works, and I'd recommend checking out his video if you wanted a more breakdown for this. But essentially what this does is the longer that you hold in your charge shot while it's charging up, the more damage you will do. You can tell when you're at max charge, uh, both by the light in front of the gun. It's kind of odd, but you can notice this, how much the gun is glowing as to when it will uh, be at full charge, as well as if you just visually look at the gun itself. Um, you will start seeing a yellow lightning stream, I guess, going around it, and that will pretty much indicate that it's at full charge. So if you get the timing down, then Overcharger can be really useful, and you can get even more damage out of the weapon, which is pretty nice. We also have Controlled Magnetic Flow. This one lets you have charged shots at less power, which can be useful for taking out certain enemies. Uh, you can use this to just charge up and shoot regular grunts in the head to kill them with one shot without using up the full charge. You can also use it to body shot acid spitters and web spitters. Well, at least web spitters. I don't think you can do it with acid spitters. I think it'll still take a full charge without the uh, damage mod. I think with the damage mod, you can actually do it at 75% if I remember right. I could be wrong about that, though. I could have been running another, like, overclock with it. And then our last option is the improved feed system. This one just cuts down our reload speed. This one, I pretty much always take if I'm going to run this with the minigun because then I'm not taking Born Ready. If I'm taking Born Ready, then this one is still pretty useful because I might want to shoot the uh, coil gun multiple times. And it's just kind of what I go to when I'm not trying to get more uh, damage out of Overcharger or get potentially more value out of the magnetic flow. In Tier 3, we have Concussive Shockwave. This adds a 50% chance to stun enemies within 1.5 meters of a shot's trajectory for 3 seconds. So this counts for everything that it passes nearby. There's a chance to concuss it. Stunning enemies is really useful, so I take this one pretty often. The other option is really good, though, too. This one has a 75% chance to fear enemies uh, near the projectile as well. Both these are really great. It depends on which you value more. Do you want enemies running away from you, or do you want enemies being stunned? Running away can be useful, especially if you like taking the electric trail, because they can run into the electric trail further and take more damage. Stun is always going to be useful on everything because if you hit a Menace or Praetorian or whatever, it can't spit at you, so that's good. Usually I'll take the Concussion, but Fear is also a really good choice. In Tier 5, we have Defense Enhancement. This makes it so when you are charging up and holding the charge shot, you have damage reduction. It says on this that it's 50% is incorrect, but I thought that it got buffed. Is it still 30%? I'm not sure if Carl.gg is up to date, and I'm not sure if the actual game is up to date, if it's not telling you the right ones. Either way, this one I find to be really useful because this is 30%, at, at least 
or 33%, depending on which of these numbers is right. This is at least a 33% damage reduction towards everything. And the only other weapon that has this is the auto cannon. And the auto cannon has to be at full rate of fire when you do this, which makes it not always the most practical. It's not a bad option to take on most missions. This gives you damage reduction from everything, so you can use this to charge up even if you don't intend on shooting and you're planning on jumping off of something and feel like you'll take full damage. Uh, it can also be useful for blocking an incoming hit if you don't feel like you can dodge it. So if a spitballer shoots at you or something shoots at you, you can potentially block some damage there. And it does seem to linger a little bit while you're using the weapon. Our other option is Shockwave. This gives us 20 damage in a direct area in front of the gun for three meters. This is very similar to the Shockwave effect of the boomstick that Scout Shotgun has. So anybody unaware, the double barrel does have AOE damage directly in front of it. That's why you can just shoot over something and still deal damage to everything in front of it. This works in a similar way. This is great for taking out like swarmers or just anything that's getting too close to your face. So if you find that being kind of an issue, you can use that and it works pretty well. Usually I go with the defense enhancement though, just because of the extra utility. I find it really nice on Gunner. In tier five, we have the Necrothermal Catalyst. This makes it so when you kill a burning enemy, that enemy will explode dealing damage to all enemies within four meters of it. This one, I've noticed that you can't get to trigger with the trail of the coil gun. You actually have to shoot and kill it with the projectile, at least as far as I know. I'm not sure if anybody else has noticed that, but it doesn't seem to be affected by the trail, at least in any of the times that I've tried it, because I've tried it quite a few times with Hellfire, and usually it takes two shots, which is not as great as I thought it would be. Our second option is dilated injector system. This just increases the trail radius so we can hit more enemies with the trail. And then we have electric trail. This gives us an electric trail behind the gun, or at least behind the trail of the gun, not actually behind the gun. Uh, this deals 12 electric damage per second for all enemies that stand inside of it, as well as it slows down their movement speed by 80%. Usually I'll take electric trail. I find this one to be really useful. It adds extra slowdown to enemies that are moving around. Even if I'm firing at something high up in the air like Mactera, there's still a good chance that there will be other Mactera or even bugs walking on nearby walls that could still be affected by the electric trail. So this is my general purpose build for the coil gun. I also run it for full damage when I'm trying to take it on a dreadnought mission. So the full damage coil gun build that I usually run is going with extra coil for extra damage in tier one, going with overcharger for extra damage in tier two. This can hit really hard and you don't even need to see the weak spot of the dreadnought. You can just fire right through the dreadnought, assuming it's the regular dreadnought or the hive guard. Obviously the twins, you'll do damage regardless of where you hit them. In tier three, it's your choice. I do like the fear with this one, but that's personal preference. Either one of these is great. In tier four, I'll still usually go with the defense option here, but the shockwave is also really good, especially if you are taking this on a dreadnought mission and you are just bringing a lot of single target damage. The shockwave could be potentially better because you can get rid of things like jellyfish and you can get rid of things like swarmers, but I just really like the extra utility of the defense. It lets you take that extra fall damage, which is just nice. And then in tier five, um, it, this one really depends what you want. I'll usually go with dilator injected system just so that I can do a little bit more damage with the trail too, but the electric trail is also really good. I switch between the two pretty often. And I guess you could also take the necrothermal catalyst too if you are bringing like incinerary grenades, which are pretty good now because they do build up heat really fast and you can kill Nemesis with them surprisingly quick. So those are my two builds that I usually run with the coil gun without overclocks. We will be talking about each of the overclocks because I have got to try the coil gun out quite a bit and its overclocks are pretty cool. Um, thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully this kind of helped you guys out and special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this and if you would like to be a part of that, you can. There are links down in the description. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.